Good morning. Today we will be learning about the arch of iota. So I would want to orient you to the specimen. This is the mediastinum which has been focused upon after removal bilaterally of the lung. The mediastinum which is occupied mainly by the heart and the pericardium is the middle mediastinum. Now I can divide the mediastinum by an imaginary plane which passes along the level of the second coastal cartilage. This imaginary plane is called as the manubrio sternal angle or the angle of Lois. So what are the events which I can demonstrate here? So this is the right ventricle and from the right ventricle I have the origin of the pulmonary artery. The pulmonary artery bifurcates at the level of the manubrio sternal angle. Now the ascending iota which takes origin from the left ventricle continues upwards as the arch of iota and the arch of iota descends downwards and at the level of the manubrio sternal angle it descends downwards as the descending thoracic iota. The trachea also bifurcates at the level of the manubrio sternal angle. Another event which occurs here is that the superior vena cava receives the azygous vein. The superior vena cava also becomes intrapericardial at this level. So you have the superior vena cava formed here by the right brachiocephalic vein and the left brachiocephalic vein. This event occurs at the level of the first coastal cartilage. The superior vena cava extends from the first coastal cartilage to the level of the third coastal cartilage. At the second coastal cartilage you have the entry of the azygous vein. So now we focus upon the arch of iota. The arch of iota begins as a continuation of the ascending iota and it turns backwards and towards the left. So it has got a concavity in the lower part and in the upper part of the arch of iota the major structure which you can see are the branches of the arch of iota. So if I take from right to left the branches are the brachiocephalic trunk, the left common carotid artery and the left subclavian artery. The arch of iota descends downwards as the descending thoracic iota. Anteriorly it is related to the superior intercostal vein. So we have already spoken about the superior intercostal vein which is formed by fusion of the second, the third and the fourth posterior intercostal veins on the left side. It crosses the arch of iota to drain into the left brachiocephalic vein. It is crossed anteriorly by the phrenic nerve and the left vagus. The left vagus gives off the left recurrent laryngeal nerve which winds around the inferior aspect. So if you look at the relations, superiorly it is related to its own branches. The branches are again it is re related to the crossing of the left brachiocephalic vein. Anteriorly the left phrenic nerve, the left vagus giving off the left recurrent laryngeal nerve. Inferiorly it is related to the bifurcation of the pulmonary trunk. The arch of iota this is the continuation of the ascending iota and here what you see this dilatation towards the right wall is what is called as a bulb of the iota and is formed by the push of the ventricular blood towards the arch of the iota and as it ascends upwards you can see that it is so oriented that it does not lie anteriorly it lies anteriorly to the left and posteriorly to the right so the relations are best described as anteriorly and to the left. So if you look at it anteriorly and to the left you can see this is the left vagus and the left vagus gives off the left recurrent laryngeal nerve. This is the ligamentum arteriosum which connects the arch of iota to the left pulmonary artery. The ligamentum arteriosum is a remnant of the ductus arteriosus. Closely related to it is the recurrent laryngeal nerve and these branches which you see here are the cardiac branches which go on to supply the heart. The cardiac branches take part in the formation of the superficial cardiac plexus and the deep cardiac plexus. The superficial cardiac plexus is located in front of the ligamentum arteriosum while the deep cardiac plexus is situated in front of the bifurcation of the trachea. You can also see clearly that anteriorly into the left is, the pres is present the left phrenic nerve. So these are the structures which you can see anteriorly and to the left. Posteriorly and to the right you can see so this is posteriorly and to the right the superior vena cava as I reflected this which you see here colored in yellow is the trachea and this is the esophagus. The tracheoesophageal groove is related to the vagus nerve in the lower part. Here also in the upper part you can see the brachiocephalic trunk dividing into the 
right subclavian artery and the right common carotid artery. So this is the left common carotid artery and this is the left subclavian artery as you see here. So these are the structures which you can see along with the arch of iota. Thank you.